Hi, this is Thomas from Apex Game Tools. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to Apex Steer, which is the new steering package for Apex Path. In Apex Steer, we have a number of new steering components, mainly focused on group movement, um, but also adding additional components for single unit movement. We'll uh, look at the list of included components, and I'll touch briefly on each, um, but for a detailed introduction to each of these components, there will be a separate video on each of them. We'll also be looking at the behavior of units once they have Apex Steer applied to them. And we'll start by looking at that. So here we have a scene. We have a group of units in the middle here. This is a selectable group that I can move around using my mouse. And then when I start the scene we will also have additional units spawning. Um, we'll have two groups and a single unit. We have an orange group on the left side here. It moves around in a grid formation and we have a green unit group that moves around in a circle formation and then we have this solar unit that just moves around by itself. Now the most visible components at work here are the steer for formation component that keeps units in a formation when they can. As you can see they will keep their formation when they're not avoiding other units or avoiding obstacles. The other component at work is the uh, unit avoidance component which will keep units from colliding with each other. There are, of course, additional components at work. Um, they are not as visible at the, as the others. Uh, we'll get back to them when we see the list. Now, units, uh, obviously, they don't have to move around in formations. Um, they can also just move around as a group uh, normally. So if I select my group of units here, um, I can move them around um, the scene like this, um, and they will move as a group. In this case, they will not have a formation. Now, what is also included, as we will now see, is uh, arrival. You can see we also already have the orange group arrived down here. As you can see, it actually gave up its formation when it arrived. Um, now, the green group arrived. It actually keeps its formation and arrival. So, this is one of the settings that you can tweak um, on, in this case, the formation component. So, um, before we go to look at the lists, I'm just going to show you a quick demo of single unit movement as well. So, here we have a scene with four units, single units. When we start the scene, they will move to the opposite side. Uh, and as you can see, they will avoid each other, so they, they do not collide. For single unit movement, um, a subset of the included components are uh, relevant. Obviously, they do not benefit from formation, <laughs> um, but they do benefit from unit avoidance and they also benefit from separation. In Apex Path, if uh, singular units would uh, attempt to arrive at a destination already occupied by another unit, they would actually collide with that unit. Um, this is no longer the case. In Apex Steer, uh, units that have already arrived will actually yield their position if other units try to arrive at that position. So this benefits both single units and groups. So now let's have a look at the list of components. So we're back in the original scene. Uh, I have selected one of the units and expanded the uh, steering section of the Apex components. As you can see, the list uh, contains some new uh, components and we'll just touch briefly on each of them. The first new component is called Steer for Block Cell Repulsion. Um, this basically prevents units from colliding with walls. Um, of course, when given a path, they will never be given a path into a wall. Um, but due to how other components, such as avoidance and separation, may actually uh, give units a steering vector into a wall, this will actually prevent that from happening. Second up, we have Containment. Um, it is similar to um, block cell repulsion in the way that this will prevent units from falling into holes, falling off ledges, or falling entirely off the map. Then we have steer for formation. We already saw that in action. Steer for path is obviously still here. Um, this will only be used if uh, a unit from a group gets too far away from its uh, group um, to get back to the group. Steer for separation. Um, this will be in effect if units are not in formation, 
um, units will keep a certain distance distance to each other. Um, this was what we saw with the group of uh, red units when they moved around. Um, so this is basically uh, keeping units within the group from colliding with each other. Now it also serves a secondary purpose which has to do with arrival. When units arrive, as mentioned before, um, they actually will yield their spot to other units um, if they try to arrive at the same position. They will also move away if uh, units try to get through where they have arrived. Then we have unit avoidance, which we also saw in action before. And then we have steer for vector field. We'll get back to that in just a second. Um, and finally, we have two um, supporting components, a controller uh, that controls some of the other behaviors, and a scanner that is a support for the avoidance and the separation components. So that's it for the components uh, added to units. Um, there are also two components for the game world. Um, the first we have a grouping strategy. Um, if you haven't already watched the video on groups and grouping strategies, it is available in the tutorial section um, of Apex Path on the website. And then we have the vector field manager, and this is the manager that manages the different vector fields available um, with Apex Steer. Now we haven't actually seen vector fields in action um, before, um, but I will just touch briefly on, on that uh, at the end here. Um, so as mentioned, each group um, member will have this steer for vector field component. And what it does is that instead of having units move um, according to a path, so that each unit in a group would get its separate path, instead they get just one path for the group, and then the group creates a vector field that the move, move the unit uh, group then moves along. Um, and we can just see that in action. So I'm just going to disable the other unit so we can just have a focus on this single unit in the middle here. So when I uh, select that and I move it, uh, it creates a model unit um, and then when I select that we can actually see the vector field displayed. So the vector field is basically just a, a guide that is applied to the grid that the units can then follow um, and this will make the units able to uh, move more intelligently because they have more options when they're moving across the grid. This basically means that when units are given uh, a destination um, they have additional options if the group had been a little bit bigger than it is now uh, it would have also picked one of the other uh, pathways through these as you can see um, the vector field allows them to pass through each of these holes so that's it for this introduction as mentioned there will be separate videos for each of the components um, so that you can see the different uh, properties of those and uh, how to tweak them to suit your needs. So that's it. Thanks for watching.